Well, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. I gotta work in like 15 minutes, so we're gonna do this episode really, really quickly. Uh, the Ned Rig, right? N-E-D. It's the new thing. It's actually not a new thing. It's an old thing. It's called the Midwest Finesse. Uh, it was developed pretty long ago. Uh, you all know what a Ned Rig looks like. Uh, it's nothing crazy, nothing special. But today I'm going to show you how we're going to make ours just kind of off the cuff through Fusion 360 and a 3D printer because I figured um, it's popular right now, so we're going to ride that wave. Uh, I haven't been around for a little while. You can see the setup's a little bit different. I'm still working on trying to get lighting to work during the day because uh, now I have a hole in my wall. Uh, we'll hop into Fusion 360. I'll show you kind of how I design this up. All right, so we are in Fusion 360 here now, and uh, this is the actual hook that I'm going to use. So I'm going to be using a, I believe I got Mustads on this. Uh, it's a one-aught hook. It's a really thick wire shank. I'll turn this body off. You can see that right there. So all I'm doing to make this uh, hook is I'm just putting a canvas on. I have videos on if you want to do uh, how you need to calibrate a canvas. So all I'm doing is taking a picture of this. I use grid paper so I can align it vertically and horizontally. Really easy onto the origin of my Fusion 360 design. So I take a picture of that and then I come in and I calibrate uh, the canvas. You can go over here and just do calibrate do that to the size of like the eye for instance on diameter or the hook shank size itself I calibrate that up and then that way it's like it's actual what's in world is the same as in the 3d space in CAD so I make that then I come in and I do a sketch let's see if I can do these sketches without it being crazy here there we go you can see I have a sketch on here I'll take the canvas off real quick it's just a sketch down the middle of the hook itself. All I'm going to do with that then is I'm just going to create a pipe by selecting that sketch. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to do uh, a create yeah, pipe. I have it set to shift P on hotkeys. So Then I'm just going to do a circular pipe here. I'm going to select my path and then I'm going to set it to a diameter. So I don't have bodies on right now. I'll put bodies on and I'll turn this one off so we can tell what we're looking at. Then you just set uh, your section size for however big that hook shank is. So I think my diameter on that hook is like a 1.3. So I set this to 1.3. That's how we get our body. So once we have our body there established, we got that all worked out. Then I just have to come in here, start a new sketch on this plane. And I'm just going to start the new sketch. Oh, these are for all the soft plastics. We'll go over that too. I'm trying to figure out what I did here. You know how that goes. Set the sketch here for this, essentially how big I want the Ned Rig head to be in diameter. Set that sketch. All we're going to do to create this Ned Rig, like it's really simple. I just say, oh, maybe I want it about that big. I'll make a new body. Once that new body is established, right, we just have a Ned Rig head here. This is not, I mean, this isn't crazy rocket science, right? So I just move that up onto my body. And there's the bottom of my Ned Rig. Like, this is the most simple jig design you're ever going to do, ever see. So now, all I have to do now is just pull this up, probably about right there. I don't know, that looks pretty big. Then all, then all I have to do right here is just, I hit F for a fillet, and then I can just fill it the top down. There you go, boom. You got a really shallow Ned, Ned Rig there. You got a steep, well, I guess steep corner on there. But you can pull this out, make it real shallow, make it real deep you know make it more like a bullet head if you wanted like this is the most simple thing ever to do so i figured why haven't we done this yet uh on hooks that i really like so those mustad hooks are really thick i prefer a thicker hook i don't like them bending out there are a lot of people that like them to be thinner so they can bend them out of weeds and stuff and rocks and and logs that's cool you can do it the same way here i've actually poured this mold with both and they both work so right, so let's say we wanted this one this looks good so i'm just going to make this uh, fill it this edge here down to about right there like that looks like a decent one so all I'm gonna do is copy that body in place I'm gonna bring that down probably keep the hook back in there just make it look good so now we have this second body I'm just gonna delete that old fillet I'm gonna pull this up let's say we wanted that Ned rig a little bigger I'm gonna pull this up I'm gonna go to the edge I'm just gonna bring this down here so now what we end up having here I'll move this out of the way for you I'll bring this other one back in. So now we have a series of different size Ned rigs 
that we can all incorporate here together. All you have to do then for this design, for this to be able to be set in a mold, is to modify, combine these two into one, and then that becomes one body that you can then deal with. So, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those really simple designs. I uh, haven't done it yet, so I figured why not. Uh, I posted this on Instagram a long time ago, but I figured I'd do a video real quick on it. So then once we have that kind of established, uh, I went through and I kind of got it figured out. You can see me playing around here with like that's one size. There's a little smaller size, top, that kind of thing, and then one even larger. Once I got it all figured out and which ones I wanted where, uh, I then brought them down and created a mold out of it. So I've done this quite a bit. Uh, before just made those bodies into components and then we brought them down into here so I'll show you those so all we're doing here with a mold I've had countless videos not countless I mean obviously you can count them but I think I got like 20 or so videos online right now about how to make these molds this is a mold master so this is actually a negative version of what will be in silicone so the silicones poured in there you'll have a negative version of the silicone so you can pour in lead from that so uh, you can see here, there's there's the small one, uh, then we have a large one, and, or a medium one, and then a large one. So I made three different molds with three different sizes here. You can see uh, they change diameter of the sprue hole and everything. All I did for the sprue is I just came in with a sketch here, made it down like this in uh, like a triangle, and then revolved this and combined it into the mold. And I just went to where that fillet stops on the top because I want as big of a sprue in here as possible. These are still very, very small uh, jig heads, so we got to make sure that we can get the lead down in there fast enough. So I made these three. I poured them out in silicone. Uh, I made them uh, just a one size cavity, so it was real quick. Each one was really quick to pour. I made this, uh, each one in the Mold Max 60 silicone. Poured those out, did all the vacuum uh, chambering and all that on those so that they were all good to go. Formed those up and then tried those out with the Lee Pour Pot. All three of the sizes worked really well with both uh, Eagle Claw hooks and the Mustad hooks that I had. So I figured that we would move into something a little bit larger than that. So we made, uh, well, I made a, a large four cav or five cavity rather. I haven't labeled this four cavity, I don't know why. But this incorporates now all three of those sizes. So I have a small, a medium, and then a large net. I did two, two, and one because I didn't see myself really using the large cavity uh, mold a lot. Like that size is pretty significant. I think it's up uh, pretty close to three eighths ounce. And for fi a finesse technique like the net rig, I don't quite know if you need it really that heavy. So we're doing two uh, copies of the small, two copies of the medium, and then one of the large each time. So this is the same design as uh, anything I ever do. I just put it out here equidistant from each other, cut that in half, flip it over, pull it out. This is going to be then 3D printed. I 3D printed this one I think on the Anet A8 because they're so small we can put them together. Printed this one out. Uh, I, I always print out at uh, 0.2 layer height up until this base of the mold and then it's uh, 0.1 all the way to the top of the lure itself so right at the top of the jig head that switches from 0.08 layer height to uh, back to 0 0.2 layer height so I usually print uh, the bottom at 0, 0.0 or 0 0.2 layer height at 10% infill and then once I hit the 0 0.08 layer height uh, variable settings in Simplify 3D I turn that back up to 100%. So I actually have a solid object where the lure is going to be or the jig head or whatever we're designing. So that's the same 3D printing settings that I put here. I put these columns into these molds. I put the columns in there because then I can run a quarter 20 bolt through there and I don't have to run clamps. Uh, I really don't like running clamps all over for molds because then you can't, you don't know where the clamps are half the time. You can't put them together. So I just like doing that. So then after this was printed, we did this, I did the same thing we always do on this channel. I just poured in Mold Max silicone to this and then went ahead and poured it in t uh, with the Lee Pour Pot with lead. So this worked out really well. Uh, after it demolded, it demolded really well. I cut out some wooden fixtures on either side. It's just half inch plywood to hold it together. 
and then I just uh, run the Lee production pour pot at three for a temperature. It goes up to seven or ten or something like that, I believe. Uh, but I keep it at about three. That seems to work out. The Mold Max doesn't burn or anything like that, and you can get multiple runs out of it really quickly. Uh, I've had a really high success rate on this one. It's been pretty great. After doing a couple of them without any kind of plastic keeper, what I ended up doing was taking some leader wire that I had, some pretty thin thick leader wire not crazy it's like 0.038 i think inch diameter leader wire i've been using that for a lot of these kind of musky pike crankbaits i've been doing on the channel i use that what i do is i just cut off a, a small amount i would say like half an inch and then i bend each side and then i put that i put that into the silicone mold itself and i use that as a hook keeper it works really well so it's kind of crazy i'd like to see somebody try to put a hook keep into a mold that doesn't have a design for it in something like aluminum because you're just not going to be able to do it but it's pretty crazy with the mold max 60 molds that we can put this hook keep into the mold max 60 and it'll form around it so i didn't have to modify this mold at all i didn't have to put any hook keeps or anything into the silicone mold itself because it just conforms to that hook keep so from then on i was just running out of this five cavity putting on the hook keep in the there and i still have the five cavity around still works really well and i'm still getting a lot of ned rigs i'm using a, a heat based powder paint for these i really like those a lot compared to using like nail polish or something it's just a lot quicker uh seems to hold heat really well i just use a, a heat gun to heat them up and then it works really well so I've been getting really good colors out of it. Uh, they work really well. I've actually caught a few fish with them. It's just a Ned Rig. Like I said, this is one of the easier jigs to ever make. I mean, I don't know how you could get any easier than this. Frankly, this is easier than doing like, like a roundhead jig. Because like with a roundhead jig, you got to actually bring down kind of like a, a grub keep or something like that. And you, don't, you just don't have to do this here. You just cut it off at the bottom, put a small fillet on top. So as far as like difficulty of this this is definitely easy uh if you want to try and start getting into your own ned rigs like pouring out your own jigs and stuff like that feel free to try and design some of these i could see this being really crazy you could do real thick designs on larger hooks you could make it kind of more like a bullet head something like that well hopefully that was enjoyable in some way shape or fashion i hope so anyway uh not really sure uh, like i said it's pretty easy i've seen a lot of people doing this on instagram now which is pretty cool so they're modifying it different shapes in their own way. They're using silicone to make some really cool jigs. So I have one in uh, the hopper here. I'll probably make a video on pretty soon. That's actually copying a minnow head, which I thought was pretty cool, making a big pike uh, swim bait. Action looks really good in the water. Haven't really been filming much because we're in summer doldrums right now. It's like 88 degrees outside. Really hard to try and catch fish right now. Catching a few, but not exactly video worthy. So. I'm hoping more towards duck season in the fall. We're going to get out there and do a lot more filming, a lot more fishing, and hopefully a lot more catching. But, yeah, if you liked it, be sure to leave a like. If you really liked it, maybe subscribe. That's kind of what I'm here for. Uh, there's also Discord and uh, subreddit and all that stuff, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. You can sit around. And I guess uh, till the next time, keep your amps up and uh, wash your hands.